All right, guys, here we go. This is a TickWatch Pro 5. If you are a fan of TickWatch, you have probably been waiting a couple of years for this. My boy has made some changes. They've made some big steps forward with the TickWatch Pro 5. This is my review. Let's get into it. Okay, let's just break it down how this video is going to go. I'm wearing the watch right now. I have been wearing this watch for the last couple of weeks. I've been wearing it day in and day out. I've been wearing it to sleep. I've been wearing it to work out. I have worn it all through the day so I can bring you my thoughts. But look, this is a smartwatch. It's a smartwatch that does a lot of sport watch type things. All right, a lot of us out there, we want both of these bases covered. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you know that most of my stuff is about running. In fact, all of my stuff is about running. This video is going to be no different. So this video is going to be very heavily focused on the sport side of things, particularly running, and also all the stuff that we like to track as far as our fitness goes. Now I'm going to be going over a lot of the features, especially the things that Mobvoi has added to the TickWatch Pro 5. All right, let's get started off with price. The TickWatch Pro 5 will cost you 350 US dollars, 470 Canadian dollars, or 330 pounds in the UK. Now I've also been comparing this watch to the Apple Watch Ultra. So this is sort of a benchmark that I've been comparing it to, and when I've been out doing my activities outside with the GPS, I've been comparing it to a couple other watches. But we're about those watches when we get to the section where we talk about GPS and heart rate and all that. One of the most important things that has changed from the previous tick watches to this tick watch, the tick watch Pro 5, is that you can no longer use this watch with iOS. I don't know if that is going to change in the future, but the tick watch Pro 5 needed a new app to work with it. And that new app is the Mobvoi Health app. On the previous tick watches, you needed to download the first Mobvoi app and Wear OS. Now you only need the Mobvoi Health app. So it's a lot more streamlined. If you are entrenched in the Apple ecosystem, you probably have an Apple Watch. For everybody else, the TickWatch Pro 5 is actually a solid competitor to the Apple Watch. I'm going to show you why. Now, the main reason that the TickWatch Pro 5 works so well is because it is powered by the Snapdragon W5 Generation 1 chip. It is the first smartwatch powered by this chip. It is also working with Wear OS 3.5. So everything just works a lot smoother and a lot faster than previous watches that you've used with Wear OS. And that whole UI being so smooth and so fast is because that Snapdragon W5 chip is the most advanced wearable platform for from Qualcomm. The watch case is made with aircraft grade aluminum and high strength nylon with fiberglass. The screen is Corning Gorilla Glass with an anti fingerprint coating. So obviously this is going to stand up to you banging it against stuff. It's not going to get scratched easily. The band is a 24 millimeter silicone band. It is removable so you can remove it and replace it with any of the countless bands that you can find out there. The TickWatch Pro 5 has two gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes of ROM, and the display is a 1.43 inch 466 by 466 AMOLED display. But that isn't the only screen. The AMOLED display is partnered with an ultra low power display. So this watch does have two displays and you can choose through the settings which display you want to display at any time. Obviously the AMOLED display is going to use a lot more battery power. So the ultra low power display is a good option for your day to day use. Now they have updated their ultra low power display from their previous watches and it now displays a lot more information. So now you really can just tilt your wrist and look at the ultra low power display and get your heart rate, your step count, your direction on the compass, your oxygen, saturation, all without actually going into the watch and accessing the apps. Super handy on the fly and without draining that battery by having the AMOLED display on. With that said, I actually really enjoy looking at the AMOLED display, so I have that on a lot of the time. The TickWatch Pro 5 has a 628 milliamp hour battery and Mobvoi claims an 80 hour battery life. Now, I don't know what the specifics are for Mobvoi getting that 80 hour battery life. You know, these tests are always done in lab settings and usually using the fewest amount of apps and the less power hungry features. I like all the power hungry features. And I also go out and I use GPS for at least an hour and a half a day. And in my testing, I have been able to get just over two days of use. Some of you are thinking, Matt, two days? That, that's not very good. My friends, that is actually fantastic. So in my use case scenario, the TickWatch Pro 5 has the same battery as my Apple Watch Ultra. And that means that the TickWatch Pro 5 is about double that of a normal Apple Watch. The TickWatch Pro 5 does connect to five satellite constellations, GPS, Beidou, GLONASS, Galileo, and QZSS. It is a single band GPS, so it's only connecting to one band at a time, but that's really neither here nor there. You're gonna see in just a few minutes that when I use this watch and I compare it to other GPS watches that have a dual band configuration, it performs extremely well and very similar to those watches. The TickWatch Pro 5 does have Google Wallet, so you're able to make those NFC payments. It is waterproof to 50 meters, and you can go open water swimming with it. It will track your GPS and the heart rate will work when the watch is underwater. The 
TickWatch Pro 5 does have access to over a thousand watch faces. Now, if we go over to the watch right now, we can see that I have my channel logo here on the watch face. And if I want to change it, I press and hold and I can swipe to the left or to the right. And I can choose any of the watch faces that I have chosen to actually put onto the watch. Let's change it to this one. And then on a lot of the watch faces, there are areas of the watch face that are configurable. So you can change the complications. All of the complications are able to be changed within the Mopvoi Health app. Now, there are a lot of watch faces in the Mopvoi Health app, but you also have access to the Time Show app. And in the Time Show app, you have pretty much unlimited choices for watch faces. Now, a lot of them you do have to pay for. It's a pretty nominal fee, but there are also a lot of free watch faces. So if you don't wanna buy them, you don't have to. Brand new for the TickWatch Pro 5 is the button configuration and how it works. Oh, by the way, this is the ultra low power display. You can see I've got the time in the middle, the date, my step count, my heart rate is right in the lower right-hand corner, but the buttons. TickWatch has changed it. We've got one button right here on the top. And now we have this rotating crown and the rotating crown can be used to click, to launch, apps and to scroll to actually navigate through the apps. There's also a very satisfying haptic feedback whenever you scroll the wheel. From our watch face, we are going to press the crown and that is going to access our app menu. From there, I can either use my finger to use the extremely sensitive touch screen, or I can just scroll up and down using the rotating bezel. If you ever want to get back to the main time screen, you can just go ahead and press the bezel. Or let's say you just want to go back one screen. Let's just access the calculator for now. If I want to go back to the app screen, I can just swipe to the right and it goes back to the previous screen. This top button is going to access your most recently used apps. And we can see I just use the calculator app. Tick exercise is one that I use every day. Let's briefly talk about the essential mode settings because this is huge. This is a way that Mopvoi has developed the TickWatch Pro 5 so the battery just lasts as long as possible. So essential mode, essentially, is the state the watch goes into when it uses as little power as possible. So it stops using the apps that aren't absolutely necessary, right? This is good. This is good if our watch battery is getting low and that's how it actually worked on the previous versions of the TickWatch. However, on the TickWatch Pro 5, you can now schedule a central mode. So if there's a time, let's say when you're sleeping or you're in a meeting and you don't want to be disturbed, you want that watch to go into a central mode, you can now schedule it. But the best part for me at least is the smart essential mode. And the watch knows when you go to sleep and it goes into essential mode to save battery. But most importantly, when it's in the essential mode, it is still taking your heart rate. It's still taking your oxygen saturation if you have those settings on. It's still tracking your respiratory rate. So you're not losing any of that valuable information that you want to get while you're sleeping just because it's in a central mode. But the watch is still paring down and using as little power as possible. This is a real gem. Oh, look, I know we're talking about the battery life and how you can save it with essential mode. But what I did skip over when we were talking about putting my watch on the charger every night is that the TickWatch Pro 5 now has fast charge. And basically the fast charger means in 30 minutes of charging, it will get to 65% battery life. That's pretty good. The charger for the TickWatch is the same as it have been for the previous versions. We have a two prong magnetic charging cord and it just sticks right on like that. It's magnet. And look, when I put the watch down, do you see the percentage going up? I love this. So now we're at 71.2. You can actually watch the percentage of your battery charge going up in real time. Okay, let's uh, let's talk about Tick Pulse. But Tick Pulse does have 24 hour monitoring and it doesn't have to have 24 hour monitoring. This is a, a setting that you can turn on and off. The TickWatch Pro 5 does detect AFib and irregular heartbeats, but that feature is not available in the UK or Japan. And of course, the TickWatch Pro 5 is not a medical device. So you have to take that reading with a pinch of salt. But if it does give you an AFib reading, I recommend you go to the hospital. So let's go to Tick Pulse. We're gonna go to the bezel and we're gonna enter the app menu. We're gonna scroll down. There it is. I'm gonna select Tick Pulse. And right off the bat, you can see that it is taking my reading. We can see today I've got a maximum heart rate of 181, a low of 145. And you can see by the colors on the graph that I had a big session earlier in the day when my heart rate got really high. Now I can always scroll down and right now we can see the heart health. We're gonna to get to that in just a second. Then I can scroll down and see even more data it's telling me my resting heart rate is 74 beats. And then it tells me my heart rate zones throughout the entire day. If I scroll down just a little more, it shows me for the last week my resting heart rates. And if I scroll down just a little more, it tells me if there is any abnormal records. Luckily, I don't have any abnormal records. But I do have my tick pulse on all the time. I want it tracking when I sleep. I definitely want it tracking when I'm working.
working out and I like to know what my heart is doing throughout the day. Next, let's talk about Tech Sleep. The TechWatch Pro 5 does track your sleep. It can monitor your SpO2, your respiratory rate and your body temperature while you're sleeping. To get to Tech Sleep, we are going to press the bezel in to get to the actual app menu. Then we are going to scroll down until we find Tech Sleep. There it is. If I select that, it tells me last night I slept eight hours and 50 minutes. And if I tap the graph where it shows me all the little bits and bobs that I slept, it's going to actually break it down for me even more. So it says here that I went to bed at 8.02 p.m. I woke up at 4.52 p.m. And then we go through our stages. There were 40 minutes awake, which I actually like. I was awake that long in the middle of the night. I had an hour and six minutes of REM sleep, a lot of light sleep, and two hours and 40 minutes of deep sleep. And there we can see my heart rate overlaid with the sleep graph. My blood oxygen during the sleep, we can see it kind of fluctuates by looking at that graph, but it was 97% and that's normal. Which brings us to the first test. Let's test tick oxygen. So my watch, the Tick Watch Pro 5, does measure my blood oxygen. And I also have one of these finger measurement tools. So let's see how they compare. We are gonna scroll down or we can use our finger on the screen and just scroll down until we get to tick oxygen. There it is. And right now it's taking the setting. I am gonna put my finger in the finger-based one. But there it goes. The TickWatch Pro 5 says my blood oxygen is 99%. My finger-based one says 96%. It was just 97% a second ago. So either way, I'm in the clear. Don't really have to worry about my blood oxygen at this point. But let's say there's a lot of data that you want to get all at one time. The TickWatch Pro 5 also measures your stress levels. But it's a lot of work to keep going into each individual app to measure each individual metric. Well, we also have the one-tap measurement. And the one-tap measurement measures your heart rate, your SpO2, your respiratory rate, your stress, and your heart health. Let's take a look at that right now. Then we're going to rotate all the way down till we get to one tap measurement. Now, there are directions on the screen. It says that everything can be tested in a test that takes approximately 90 seconds. Let's start that. And of course, we'll do a fast forward for you guys. And there we have it. The watch has measured all five metrics. Let's see my respiratory rate, my stress, medium stress. Oh, that's, that's not good. Luckily, heart health is normal. One thing I am a little concerned about is my blood oxygen level is now measuring 91%. Now, really, this isn't anything to worry about if I really did have a 91% percent oxygen and where I am at sea level it would be something of a concern but remember I just took my blood oxygen level a second ago and it was absolutely fine so I'm not going to worry about it it's just a good reminder that these devices are not precise there is a little room for error so it's definitely worth taking the readings a couple of times especially if it's concerning okay I've already showed you how the sleep portion works by going into the app but there's a lot that goes on under the bonnet and in order to test the sleep or I shouldn't say testing because all I did was sleep to test the sleep feature but I did compare it to several other wearables. I'm going to be showing you three different nights and all three nights I wore four watches to bed. I wore the Movoi Tick Watch Pro 5, I did wear the Apple Watch Ultra, I have the Chorus Apex 2 Pro and I have the Garmin Phoenix 5X. So how do these four watches compare? Let's take a look. On the first night the Tick Watch Pro 5 measured 8 hours and 54 minutes. The Apple Watch Ultra measured 8 hours and 48 minutes. The Apex 2 Pro measured 8 hours and 43 minutes and the Garmin Phoenix 5 measured 8 hours and 30 36 minutes. On my second night of testing, the TickWatch Pro 5 measured 8 hours and 51 minutes. The Apple Watch Ultra measured 8 hours and 43 minutes. Chorus Apex 2 Pro measured 8 hours and 31 minutes. And the Garmin Phoenix 5X measured 8 hours and 7 minutes. And then on the third night of testing, the TickWatch Pro 5 measured 6 hours and 27 minutes. The Chorus Apex 2 Pro measured 6 hours and 23 minutes. The Apple Watch Ultra measured 6 hours and 21 minutes. And the Garmin Phoenix 5 measured 6 hours and 7 minutes. So yes, we're, we're seeing a pattern, right? The TickWatch Pro 5 is measuring more sleep than all the other watches consistently across the board, and the Garmin is measuring the lowest amount of sleep. But all in all, I thought the TickWatch Pro 5 was close enough to the other competitors, especially the Apple Watch Ultra. In my testing, it was always within a few minutes of the Apple Watch Ultra. All right, guys, now let's talk about Tick Exercise. With Tick Exercise, you can choose from over a hundred different sports to actually track. Now look, I'll be honest, a lot of these sports I am never going to use. A lot of these sports, all they're doing is kind of tracking your time and your heart rate. But the sports that I am most interested in are the sports that use GPS. If you're using the TickWatch Pro 5 to track your GPS activities, I think this is the most important thing to note. So let's take a look at the watch and I am going to press this upper right button because this accesses my most recently used apps and there is Tick Exercise right on the top. I've also selected the activities that I use the most so they're easy for me to get to. But what I want to draw your attention to is this little cog right down at the bottom. This is the setting menu for Tick Exercise. This is where you can manage your exercise list 
settings, and right below that is high performance mode. Now, if I select high performance mode, it gives me a little toggle switch. It's toggled on right now. I can just press it and it toggles it off, but I want high performance mode on. With high performance mode on, the TicWatch Pro 5 samples the satellites every second. And that's important to do, especially if you are making a lot of turns on whichever route you're running. Here's the thing. When the high performance mode is off, the watch is still sampling the satellites every three seconds, which is still pretty good. And in my testing, I used it several times with high performance mode off, and the difference really wasn't that huge. But still, I don't know, if you're like me, if someone presents me with something that says high performance mode, you better believe I'm gonna use it. So with that, let's talk about some GPS comparisons between the TicWatch Pro 5 and the other three watches that I was comparing it to. Remember, we've got the Garmin Phoenix 5, the Apple Watch Ultra, and the Chorus Apex 2 Pro. So for this first run that I'm going to share with you, the Garmin Phoenix 5 measured 11.21 miles, the Chorus Apex 2 Pro measured 11.15 miles, the Apple Watch Ultra measured 11.06 miles, and the Tick Watch Pro 5 measured 11 miles even. And here's the thing, on that run, I had the high performance mode off, so it was only sampling every three seconds, and the other three competitors were sampling every second. So maybe not a fair comparison, but I just wanted you to see the difference. To me, at least, it wasn't that big a difference, especially between the Apple Watch Ultra. There was only 0 0.06 of a mile difference. So on this second run that I want to share with you, the Chorus Apex 2 Pro measured 10.22 miles. The Garmin Phoenix 5X measured 10.12 miles. The TicWatch Pro 5 measured 10.06 miles. And the Apple Watch Ultra measured 10.05 miles. All right, we're, we're shrinking that gap. There's always going to be some anomalies when you're comparing GPS watches. And to me, at least, this was within my like, zone of comfortable tracking. But let's look at one more run. So for this third run, the Garmin Phoenix 5X measured 8.08 .08 miles. Quartz Apex 2 Pro measured 8.07 miles. The TicWatch Pro 5 measured 8.04 miles. And the Apple Watch Ultra measured 8. 0.02 miles. So all that to say that I chose those runs just because they seem to have the biggest spread and I wanted you to see the difference in some of the comparable watches that you may be using. Okay, next up, I want to share with you some of the information uh, about heart rate and comparing the TicWatch Pro 5 to those other watches that I was using to compare it to. Now, you should know that I was only using wrist-based optical heart rate monitors in order to make these recordings. We all know that an ECG or a chest strap is going to be the most accurate heart rate reading, but I wanted to compare Apple's with Apple, so that's why we're comparing just the watches. Now, on the top half of your screen, we have our pace, and on the bottom half of the screen, we can have the heart rate. Now, this is over an entire run, but there are just a couple areas that I want to draw your attention to. Let's look at the heart rate right at the start, right here, and let me just highlight this section, and we can see all the watches kind of warm up, but then there's this purple one, and you see how the purple one is called unknown device heart rate, and it's peaking right there at the beginning. That is actually the Apple Watch Ultra, which brings me to another point, something I just want to share with you. When you use Tick Exercise, you can connect it to your Strava account. So once it uploads to Tick Exercise, it automatically goes over to Strava. Now, from Tick Exercise, you are unable to export a GPX file or a TPX file. However, once that activity goes over to Strava, you can then export the GPX file from there. Now, all the other watches that I was comparing the TickWatch Pro 5 to allow me to export the GPX files from their respective apps. So what I had to do was send my TickWatch Pro 5 activity from the Tick Exercise app over to Strava, then take out the GPX file and use that to compare to the others. That's why in this case, it says the Strava GPX heart rate at 87 beats a minute. But we can see here that in the first instance, it's the Apple Watch Ultra that kind of skyrockets just a little bit in the beginning before all coming back into line. Like this is all pretty good. Let's go back out. I want to zoom out and I want to look at some of these peaks in the heart rate data. So let's look at this right here. So if we look here, we can see there is a peak and this is actually where I was just picking up the pace just a little bit so I could peak my heart rate for this exact example. I wanted to see how the watches performed. And we can see here, this is unknown device. That means it's the Apple Watch Ultra. So that means the Strava GPX, you can see it's in the light green. We can see that it is tracking nicely with the Chorus Apex 2 Pro and the Garmin Phoenix 5. That's pretty good. That is actually high praise for the TicWatch Pro 5 that it is actually tracking the way Chorus and Garmin measures the heart rate. I'm a little surprised at the Apple Watch Ultra, but it's uh, 
that's not what we're talking about today. In my experience, the TicWatch Pro 5 has done a very good job. In the vast majority of my runs, it has measured my heart rate accurately and certainly measures my heart rate well when I'm not working out. Okay, just briefly, I do want to show you the Mobvoi Health app. Basically, everything that your watch records, you can then access it after the fact on the Mobvoi Health app. It's very friendly, very easy to use. Based on all my workouts, I did do an interval run this morning. It says that I am going to be fully recovered in 22 hours and one minute. Like we wanna know when it's time to hit it hard again, right? Now, all of these windows are able to be accessed so we can get deeper into them. If I press the activity window, it's going to pull up my activity and you can see, obviously you can tell just by looking at this when I went for my run. If I open up the week and then go back a week, last week I took 127,000 odd steps, had almost 900 minutes of exercise. It's pretty good. If I wanna dig deep into my actual exercise, I can see here that this morning I went for a run. It was an hour and 23 minutes. Now, if I open up the run, we get more information. It's given me a VO2 max of 50 based on this morning's run. These are my heart rates. You can see where it spiked when I started doing the intervals, how much time I spent in each heart rate zone. This is an even easier way to see all your sleep data. So if we wanna look more at our sleep, we can hit the sleep icon on the watch and we can dig deeper into how we actually slept. And this was last night's sleep. Again, it's the same data that we've already talked about. It's just in a more readable format. If you wanna track your VO2 max, you can look at the day, the week or the month. Oh, I know, there's something that I wanted to share with you and that is about the ultra low power screen because something that the TicWatch Pro 5 has introduced is the color coding for your heart rates when you're in a workout. So when you have the ultra low power display activated, when you bring your wrist up to look at it, the screen lights up in a color that corresponds to a different heart rate zone. All right guys, I'm out bright and early because I wanted to show you the screens and the color coded screens for your heart rate for the ultra low power display. So I've got the TicWatch Pro 5 on my right wrist. If I lift it, you can see there it is a yellow screen. And right now my heart rate is at 121 beats a minute. So there we are, yellow screen. And I forget what the percentages is, but that's a very low heart rate for me. So let me try and pick up the pace just a little, get my heart rate climbing. And today's an interval day, so I'm gonna check back in when I'm actually in the interval and I'll show you the color then. But right now, look, we've changed to orange. Orange means, I don't know, zone three maybe. All right, I'll check back in when I'm in the middle of an interval. We can see the next color in the progression. It's just about time to start my first interval. All right, let's do this. Next zone, purple. Purple's the zone I wanna be in for this interval. Okay, yeah, so here's the thing about the heart rate and the custom zones. They're not configurable, so you can't put in your own zones in order to get the colors. You're stuck with what Mobvoi actually wants you to see with the percentages of your maximum heart rate. All right, next interval. I'll just stop talking. So this is something that I think Mobvoi can really work on. I think having that customizability would take the TicWatch Pro 5 to the next level. It's tracking all our data well. I just want a chance to customize it a little more. All right, guys, I would love to hear your questions about the TicWatch Pro 5. Have you got one? Are you thinking of getting one? Let me know. And we didn't get into all the other smart features, but you know, it works with your phone. You can make calls, you can receive messages, you can reply to messages, it's all there. All that stuff works well, but it's actually not stuff that I use on a daily basis. Oh, and with that, if you have made it to this point in the video, why don't you drop the watch emoji in the comments so I know that you made it all the way to the end. My name's Matt B. This has been my review of Mobvoi's TicWatch Pro 5. Be kind, be happy, run well. I'll see you in a couple of days.